So hello, this is BSJ, and this video is going to be uh, introductory and my initial thoughts on the addition of the talent tree uh, with the patch 7.00. So with the addition of talent tree, it's important to know that they also changed the levels of ult to 6, 12, and 18. Uh, obviously, we've had the levels be 6, 11, and 16 uh, since the dawn of time. So this is quite a significant change, but at the same time, they also made it so that levels like 11 12 is the equivalent amount of xp that it took to get to a level 11 before it's also the same with level 18 is the amount of levels it took to get to level 16 uh, in the prior patches uh, the thing i want to emphasize about knowing this is that talent tree level ups take this place of a skill attribute meaning that if you hit level 10 and you level up your talent tree you'll no longer be able to level you know a point in one of your skills at that specific level uh, so what i want to say about this is that it's also a choice you know you do have a choice between whether or not you want to level your talent tree. On some heroes, it's really nice to have like two points in one ability because it's like a nice second value point, but then you like to have the other two abilities that they have be maxed. Uh, one hero, you know, that I'm going to be talking about is Ursa, and I think that he's a hero that could very well rather have all three of his abilities, uh, you know, non-ultimate abilities, maxed out before taking his first talent tree. It's something just to remember that it is a choice. Think to yourself not only like which tree branch do I want, especially at level 10, but is it worth more than my point, my skill point at that given time? Uh, so it's really important to remember that it is a choice and that it adjusted their levels accordingly. And I think that that's a really important decision factor that goes into the talent tree. So what the talent tree is, for those of you who don't know, is that it, at 10, 15, 20, and 25, being, meaning your levels, you are allowed to now upgrade a, a talent and you get a choice between two separate options. So for instance, if we go into Ursa, you see that his talent tree, at level 10, he has a choice between magic resistance and damage, you know, offensive, defensive. And at level 15, he has 20 attack speed, 5 armor, offensive, defensive. Uh, at level 20, you get health or movement speed, also kind of offensive, defensive. And then at the last level, most of the time is when you'll start seeing very unique things for every hero. Meaning like, uh, in this case, it's very specific to Ursa, like every hero can be given health, every hero can be given armor, every hero can be given attack speed but only Ursa can be given Furious White's damage, right? So obviously you have the choice between Fury, Furious White's damage and all stats, but almost every hero has a very unique level 25. And so what I want to talk about with talent trees and what I see about them is I think they add a really cool dynamic to the game. When you're no longer allowed to level attributes, so they basically take the place of those. So you have to remember that what you're doing with your talent tree is replacing 20 all stats meaning like your late game level 25 potential on any given hero is replacing whatever four things you're getting here with 20 all stats like or you're replacing 20 all stats with these four things so what i really like about these things is that you can vary between every game you know 20 all stats represents the same thing every game but having you know more damage or more magic resistance in the mid game can matter between games. Most games I'd probably want to take damage on Ursa, but there's actually games where eight magic resistance could be very useful, and I'm not really the primary damage dealer of the team. Same thing with like 20 attack speed compared to armor. A lot of games I'd probably take the armor because Ursa doesn't benefit all that much from attack speed, but if the enemy team has like three magic damage cores, or they're just incredibly light on physical damage in the first place, I, I would see no reason to take armor. So it's kind of like one of those things, it's really nice decisions that they're giving you in Dota. And I just like how it diversifies the hero pool. So like a more very specific, uh, you know, wow kind of example for me that like really struck me is Sniper. I think he's one of the heroes that got a crazy one uh, in terms of the talent tree. So obviously the first two levels, or the first level, excuse me, is between two kind of standard choices. Uh, but once you get to the next level, you see 20 shrapnel DPS, so already like very unique to him skill that just buffs up shrapnel. But then you have to choose between that and health. Most of the time I'd go for Shrapnel DPS, not be just because of what it does for him, but look at his next two levels. You have the choice between 25% cooldown reduction and 8 armor. And one of my most important facts I want you guys to understand is that cooldown reduction doesn't mean skills. It means everything. It means items, skills. That's what, It means everything. So now a sniper can have a virtually you know, 80% uptime on a Shadow Blade because he has this cooldown reduction and have, you know, Manta be basically the cooldown of a melee hero. And these are kind of things that are just really cool to a hero like this. And then the last level, he has the option to have four extra shrapnel charges. And the cooldown reduction also affects the rate at which shrapnel recharges. So you now have 20 shrapnel DPS, 25% cooldown reduction, and four extra shrapnel charges, like, theoretically. Yes, you have basic things like health, armor, and attack range, 
But those are the kind of things that don't change the hero at all. So those are the kind of things that I originally wouldn't really want to experiment with, just because I want to see how effective the other things are. Um, and I think that talent tree, the best way I can tell you guys to approach this concept is that you simply need to try. Like, think about yourself, what do these things offer me? What can I do that's unique to these talent trees? And like every game, a lot of the heroes you'll see you know, they have a very, like the two things on each, you know, the two different talents that you have to choose from at each level have two very different purposes. You know, like attack speed and mana regen. One of them's more, um, you know, spell heavy, while the other one's just attack heavy. And it's like a lot of them are between tankiness and aggressiveness. And it's like one of those things where every game is different. And I really like, uh, it, it will help you understand the game better. And I actually think talent trees to an extent help you, can be a good tool to help you analyze the state of the game and what your purpose is. Like just to take a theoretical guess that I need more armor or I need more damage, you know, that kind of thing. And that's a great use I think of talent trees. And so the best way I can word it to you is I personally am going to try all of the things that make heroes seemingly very different, at least to begin with. And the reason why I say that is because it's like, you know, 25% cooldown reduction, that makes Sniper a crazy different hero. But at the end of the day, if I feel like that's not all that effective, I can just go with eight armor. It's really hard to be like, I have 8 armor, but I wish I had 25% cooldown reduction, that kind of thing. Um, so it's really, uh, I think it's easier to do the things that are more extreme, and then be like, yeah, I'd just rather have armor, which I already know from past experience very well what that will offer me uh, as, a, you know, as a sniper in the late game. So when you're approaching these talent trees, really keep an open mind. Try to like, you know, personalize them. The, you know, the first hero that I did on stream was Ember Spirit. He was given cooldown reduction spell damage and amplification and then two his last level 25 benefits both two of his spells like two different ones and so i tried out like a veil octarine build and i thought that was really cool uh do i think that it's perfected no but i think that it's time with i with additions such as talent trees to like drop everything that you feel like you know about dota don't like you know leave the concepts behind but like start thinking outside of the box and that's like, i think this is the perfect time there's so many people out there that you know want to be experimental they want to try new things they want to just do dumb you know dumb shit that's really what it comes down to and i think that talent trees you know this stuff that may have originally been before this patch a little questionable maybe not the most optimal build like with ember for instance 15 percent cooldown reduction with an octarine you have a 21 second cooldown flame guard and it's a 20 second duration that's almost 100 percent uptime and if you combine that with your level 25 500 flame guard absorption you literally have you know a version of a ta refraction that absorbs a thousand magic damage every 20 seconds and it does 60 damage per second plus your spell damage amplification so it can be pretty crazy um, in the mid to late game especially if you reach 25 in a very timely manner which this patch is uh, much easier i encourage you guys to try out different builds uh my my main advice on the talent tree is to try different things and really like ask yourself you know what do i need this game try to use the talent tree as a solid way to analyze your purpose in any given game i hope you guys enjoyed this basic guide on talent trees and i'll be getting more hero specific as we go along especially the heroes that i you know considered are my favorite slash best heroes and uh, i hope you guys will check out those videos in the future on game League.